So let's start with a look at the system here. And system may seem like a strange word, but I think once I talk about it a little bit, you understand why I call it that. And it starts with the rifle. And here I've got the Rocky Mountain rifle and the 6.5 Creedmoor. And I had the boys at Corlanes build me this as a long range rifle. On top of that, we've got the Zeiss HD5. It's a three to 15 with a Rapid Z800 in it. And for bullet, uh, anyone who knows me knows I'm a huge fan of the mono metals like the GMX. Now one of the limiting factors with the mono metals is that they need high impact velocities around 2,000 feet per second. And that's not always possible uh, when you're shooting long range. So in this case, what I'm shooting is 129 grain SST. It works good at lower impact velocities and equally important, it's got a real high ballistic coefficient. Now, the great thing about the Rapid Z800 is that each one of the secondary hash marks is yardage indicated. A lot of the ballistic reticles, you have secondary reticles, but they can represent any yardage. In this case, number five means 500, number six means 600. So there's absolutely nothing to remember. And they can be adjusted for your individual load, or even if you change cartridges, all you do is tweak the magnification a bit. Now, the other great thing about it is, you know, people always say, well, I have to be stuck on that one magnification. And that's not really the case. Your primary reticle um, is zero to 200 yards and it doesn't change zero. So we get up close, we can dial all the way down to three power and still know we have that 200 yard zero. It's only when we start using those secondary long range reticles that magnification becomes important. And the great thing is the Zeiss calculator does all of this for you and tells you exactly what magnification you need to be at. Let's take a quick look at it here. So you'll find the Rapid Z calculator on the Zeiss website. And we go there, we just have to enter in a few variables. First, what kind of scope we have, whether we're shooting factory ammo. And we can also choose hand loads on here and it allows you to input your BC, muzzle velocity, things like that. But if you're using factory ammo, it's got a super long list of them and it lists all the variables for you. Put in our altitude, our temperature, and what reticle we're using. Now we can also go to the advanced settings and what that allows us to do is, um, you know, change our sight and distance if we want, put in our actual muzzle velocity. And I know for this gun that I'm shooting 2,810 feet per second because I've run it through the chronograph. After all that's input, it's just a simple matter of pushing submit data and it gives you your optimum magnification. In this case, it's 11.5. Now, the great thing is if I go hunting somewhere like Kyrgyzstan or somewhere like that, where the elevation is going to really change, all I need to do is input the new elevation, submit my data, and I'll get a new magnification setting. And same thing if I decide to change loads or even change rifles I put this on. It's just a matter of going back to the calculator and having it recalculated for me. Okay, all we need to do now is go do some shooting. Typically we're working with a 200 yard zero. You can shoot at a 100 yard range and know that you're gonna be um, a certain number of inches high. I think in this case, it's about one and a half inches high at 100. And the Zeiss calculator will tell you that Personally, I prefer to go right to 200 and make sure I've got um, that perfect zero. Now, I think one thing that confuses people about, um, you know, reticles like the Rapid Z is they're like, well, you always have to be on that magnification when you're shooting. And that's not 100% true. When I'm on the primary reticle and that's what I'm going to put my 200 yard zero at, I can be at any magnification and my zero won't change. So if I'm close range hunting, no big deal. I can dial, you know, in this case, all the way down to three on the three to 15 scope. It's only when I start using the secondary hash marks on the reticle that I need to make sure that um, I'm on the proper magnification. So in this case, when I'm at the range, I'm gonna crank it right up to full max. I'm gonna crank it to 15 power. That gives me my most precise point of aim. And from there, it's just a matter of anytime I wanna do longer range shooting, I have to go to the appropriate magnification, which is 11.5. Well, that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna put a couple more in there, but uh, that one was dead on. Wow, that looks perfect. So this is our 200 yard zero. We shot at 200 yards and we wanted exactly zero to 200 yards. And you look at that group, that's why we shoot Rocky Mountain rifles. You need a really accurate rifle when you're doing long range shooting. So now we've got our 200 yard zero. Now we want to go truth that rifle at longer range. So what we're going to do is we're going to go out to 500 yards and truth it. We know the magnification that um, the computer told us to be at. And quite honestly, I've never had to vary from that magnification at all, but you do want to truth it at long range. There's two things that can affect um, that magnification a little bit that in the numbers you run into the computer. You know, there's that old saying in science, garbage in, garbage out. So if you don't input the right data, you're not going to get the right magnification out. And the two things that really, really affect it are muzzle velocity, and ballistic coefficient of the bullet. So you need to know the muzzle velocity of your rifle. 
Um, you know, you can read what it says on the box or in the reloading manual, but that doesn't necessarily mean your rifle could be 100 or even 200 feet per second difference. When we start getting out six, 700 yards, that could be monumental. So you need to run your load through a chronograph. Second, you need to know the ballistic coefficient of the bullet. Now, Hornaday seems to be pretty honest with their ballistic coefficients, and I use the numbers in the book for them. Some companies, maybe not quite so honest. It's really important that we go to long range and truth it. So let's go set up the gong at 500 yards and see what happens. So now we're gonna be using the secondary reticles on the crosshair on the Rapid Z, and I'm gonna be using the number five, the 500 yard crosshair. Now you'll notice we're off the bench. I don't like shooting off the bench other than checking my primary zeros. Things can change a lot when you get out in the field with your long range shooting. So I like to shoot under the actual field conditions I'm gonna be shooting at. And I love to shoot with a bipod on my gun. And I know some people think they're a little bit heavy, a little bit cumbersome, you know, and they can be. But unless weight's a real issue, like say with sheep hunting or goat hunting or something like that, I'm gonna run with the bipod on the front. If weight is an issue, you know, I can shoot up a pack or something like that. But for the most part, having that bipod on there is just so steady that I'll put up with it. Now, some guns will change zero when you put a bipod on them. Um, we run McMillan stocks in all our guns. I've never had one change zero with a bipod, but I certainly know people who have. Now, you'll also notice that I've got um, this jacket under the back here. And for me, having a back rest is every bit as important as having a front rest and you know if you can get that back steady and front steady and that's on the target really there's nothing to do at that point but to pull the trigger so really important that you do get a back rest some guys will even carry like a, a bench rear bag with them uh, for me i just find a jacket works pretty well You'll notice my shooting position here too. I um, got my free hand back here. This is why I like really low recoil rifles. I don't have to worry about this rifle jumping up and biting me in the eye or anything like that. If I get my gun up here, I'm starting to throw my balance off. I'm gonna shake. If I can get it back here, tuck it in. Well, that looks pretty good. Oh yeah, dead on. Just gonna shoot a couple more here. Now, you'll notice one thing I did, and I think this is a really good habit for everyone to get into. I've got a really good cheek weld when I'm shooting. Some people really develop a bad habit. When they shoot, they go like this to see where they hit. You're never gonna see better than through your rifle scope. Uh, you know, I've got this on 11 and a half power. It gives me a pretty good view. If I lift my head up, I'm looking at one power. But the other thing, it, a lot of people, it, it happens. They develop really bad habits. As they're squeezing the trigger, they'll start to lift their head. And typically what that does is drop the gun down. So what I like to do is just squeeze that trigger, give lots of time for the shot. If I can see where it hit perfectly, it may be four or five seconds before I even think about lifting my head. Let's just fire a couple more here and see how that worked out. Just really take your time with your breathing. Long range shooting isn't a time to rush things. I mean, the system we use is super fast. You know, there's no turrets to turn or anything else. It's just a matter of ranging, using the right crosshair. crosshair. But once you get into shooting position, you know, make sure everything's 100% steady. Like if I take my hand off that gun right now, those crosshairs don't move off the target. So that's really, really important to me. So no complaints about that. I've got, uh, you know, two and a half, three inch group there at 500 yards. So, you know, well sub MOA, considering we had a little bit of wind today, I'll definitely take that. So, you know, that's the great thing about the system. And, and hopefully you're seeing why we call it a system now, you know, the bullet, the scope and the rifle all have to work together. And the great thing I liked about this, it's just fast. There's really nothing to do but range, point and shoot. He said, we're not long range hunters by any means. If we can get close and right in their faces, we'll take that option every time. But we have the gear and we practice enough throughout the year that we have the skill that if we do need to take those long range shots, it's no problem to do it.